What you eating? Are you gonna eat that? That looks really good. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hippity hopping down the bunny trails. Hi. <laughs> Under the benches. Yeah. What'd you find over there? Anything good? Now don't eat the raspberry plants. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Just the other day, the Bonsai Zone went over 150,000 subscribers. So thanks everyone, I really appreciate it. It's awesome. I'm in the seventh year of this channel and everything's grown, my trees have grown, the channel's grown, and I've grown too. My seven years on YouTube has been a great experience and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. It's been fantastic. I'm going to start the video by working on my larch forest. The new shoots have grown quite long and they need pinching back. I'll start at the top and you can see that some of the shoots in the apex have grown quite long. As we go down the tree, most of them need pinching. It's fairly equal, but I think even some of the ones at the bottom need pinching, but there are some shoots like in here that don't need pinching. They're only, you know, a couple of centimeters long. So I'm going to go over the tree. I'll just look at each branch, determine how far back I want to pinch it. Like some of these are really long here. They need pinching back. So yeah, I don't want my apex to thicken up too much. So I'll start at the top of the trees and work my way down, kind of probably leaving because the trees are so dense, I'm going to try going in by hand and just pinching out the shoot. Just like that. It was a really hot day today. The temperature went up to 34 degrees Celsius, so I had to be careful that I kept all my trees watered. If your uh, larches aren't getting enough water, you'll see the new shoots will start to get limp and they'll start to sag. That's when you know you need to water your larch. All right, I'll begin pinching the shoots. I'm gonna start at the apex here. Just grab it, pinch it off. Generally, most pines of that, you pinch it with your fingers and just pinch it off at the height of your fingers. That works quite well. There's a few brown needles from where I pruned it last time. I'm just picking those out too. There is a lot of shoots up in this apex. There's a wasp buzzing around. I'm going to work my way down the tree. So I like to prune them when they get about this length. They're soft enough you can pinch with your hands and they're long enough that they give some energy back to the tree. That's looking good that area there now. When I'm doing this, I'm trying not to trap needles and break needles in half, but it is quite hard. So if you get some brown needles, you just go back and pinch them out later on or just pluck them out. You can see in the interior of the forest here, how all the branches have just grown into each other. You can't even see in there. You can't see the separate trees. So it's important to shorten all those to get some air flow and sunlight into those inner branches on the forest. Otherwise, they'll just die out from shade. I tried spruce tips this spring for the first time, and I'm wondering if I should try a larch tip. I will, here I go. I'll pick a nice tender one. Wow. Not quite as sweet as a uh, spruce tip, but not the worst thing in the world either. It's close, but it's not the worst. I'm working my way around the trees, getting the apexes in shape. As you go down the trees, the, the growing tips get finer and finer and they're easier to pinch out. The ones up top were quite strong and 
probably would have been better to scissor prune the ones in the apex and just pinch the ones that are lower down. I've got all the new shoots shortened now and it didn't take all that long. It took about, I don't know, 20 minutes. I probably missed one or two somewhere, but it's a lot more open now. You can kind of see up underneath the trees, a little more light to the interior. So the next step, it's still, if you compare the top of the tree to some of the shoots down low, there's a lot of needle density up here. What I want to do is pluck out some of the older needles from the top, just to thin it out. I think it's going to get too much vigor if I leave this much green mass up top on the tree. So that'll be my next task. I'll try and reduce the foliage up top on the apexes of the trees by about 50%. So I'll do this just by plucking out some of the needles. You just pull them by hand. Try and get the ones underneath for starters. Pluck them out until you kind of get the uh, foliage mass reduced in the apex. So it's a little thinner. I think that's getting pretty close. So a little bit more here. I think that'll do. That's got that needle density reduced in the apex. You see a little more of the branch structure now. That'll take a little vigor out of that section of the tree. Here's a look at all the needles I plucked and the tips I plucked off. And over here too. Quite a pile of them. Minus the one I ate, of course. I've got the apexes thinned out on the trees now. You can see I removed a lot of the lower needles. Just made them lighter and a little weaker up top. I don't want them gaining too much strength or they start fattening up and you know, you start losing the fine delicate tips of your trees. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to give it a good watering. It's been such a hot day that I can see I've watered it I think twice already and you can see some of the moss bushes look like they're getting a little dry yeah definitely need some water All right, here I go with the water. I may have to water it thoroughly a few times to make sure it's soaking in. I wanna get it from all angles, so I'll rotate it around to the back. Start watering that. So I'm fertilizing everything, all, all the growing benches now. I usually start fertilizing in about uh, mid-June. I'll go back to the front here, make sure we're getting in all these places. That's looking good. It's starting to run out the drainage holes. I think that's well watered now. That's got the large forest in check for a while anyway. It'll uh, probably need pinching again in two to three weeks, I would imagine. This regular maintenance pinching is just something you have to do throughout the growing season. It's time now for today's update. For today's update, I'll show you some of the trees that I've repotted this spring, and we'll see how they're doing. So we'll start down here there was a little cedar that I planted. It was growing in a, I think underneath another bonsai. And I put it in its own pot and it's doing really well. And beside it is a native white pine with the soft needles. And it's growing really well also. My nightshade vine or weed that I planted 
is doing really well. You can see the new growing tip coming up here. So that'll need pruning very soon. My Virginia creeper that I planted, it was just, I pulled it up from the yard, put it in bonsai soil and it's growing really well now. It's really starting to take off. So that's kind of cool to start one of those. My bullhorn acacia is doing well. It's got a new shoot coming on it here. I don't know if you can see that, but right there. So it's doing really well. I thought these were native to Africa, but they're native to kind of Central and South America. So I didn't know that. My weeds, uh, these are called pineapple weeds and they have flowers on them. You can see the yellow flowers at the tip. And they call them pineapple weeds because if you eat the flower, they taste like pineapples. I'm not gonna eat one right now, but uh, I tried some last year and they have a real cool flavor to them. Beside it is just some other weeds. These weeds make really good accent plants if you're at a bonsai show. You can display your bonsai and have one of these kind of native weeds beside it and it looks really nice, a companion plant. I got a beech tree last year, I think it was from Connor. And I think it was supposed to be a purple beech, but I could be wrong. Anyway, it's uh, it got through the winter and it's growing nicely, so that's really good. The Osage Orange Forest continues to do really, really well. Yeah, that's growing really well. I'm really pleased. You can see all the branches coming out on it. I'm in the greenhouse and the hibiscus that I planted recently is still green and looking good. There's one yellow leaf on it, but uh, the rest is looking good. All the new shoots are still green, so I have high hopes for that. My monkey ear trees are doing really well. There's some new growth coming on them. Uh, a viewer sent me some pictures and a video of their monkey ear trees, and I think they were, I think they were, they were at least three years old, maybe even five years old. I'll show you that video. It's really interesting to see how these trees develop. They said they're quite good as bonsai. They can take vigorous root pruning, vigorous top pruning. So they're uh, a good tree for bonsai. So I'm really excited. If you look up top here, I pruned the top off and there's all kinds of new shoots coming in all around the top. So it's looking good. Um, my silk floss tree, uh, the one is a cutting and the other one is the original plant. And I had a third one down here and I made a video saying that it was doing fine. And then the next day I noticed one of the leaves fell off and then it continued to die back. So it didn't generate roots. But the others are doing quite well. They're definitely growing. They're getting, you know, branches and foliage on them now. So, and I'm not sure what's sprouted in the pot down there. There's a whole bunch of them. I have no idea what that is and where they came from, but if I let them grow, maybe I'll figure it out by the leaves, by the leaves. My holiday cactus or Christmas cactus, whatever it is, you can see it here. I gave it quite a severe pruning last time and it's bouncing back really well. It's got all kinds of growth up top. And I took a cutting off of it and over here, if you can see it, there's the cutting and it's doing really well. It's got all kinds of new growth on the top. Doing really well. The aloe is still growing like crazy. <laughs> I can see the day where it's gonna need even a bigger pot. My lemon tree is putting all kinds of new growth on. You can see all the new shoots coming off of it. It's way down here. Yeah, 
doing well. My last update for today is the larch seedlings. They are doing really well. I don't see any difference in growth between the ones in the lava rock soil versus the ones in my perlite and turfus soil. They seem to be growing about equally, but they're all growing, that's good. And they're in those root maker pots. I've left just enough daylight to water all my trees again. If you stick around after the video, I've got an update to my Ford F-250 orchard truck. But that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. I've been thinking more about this, these cracks back here. I, I've painted it up because I need to get the truck on the road for the summer. I have to use this truck. Um, so yeah, there's the cracks that go across this cross member. And I was thinking, well, I can get that fixed. I can put a new plate and I maybe an L shape so it ties into the back here, which should make it fairly strong, but I think it also needs something running from the front of the cab to the back because obviously this corner is flexing. You know, when you put your weight on the step down here to get in, you can see that crack over here open up a bit. So I think it's going to take a little engineering. I'm going to have to strengthen this cab underneath. And I think it'll wait till, have to wait till like maybe fall or something. I just don't want to, you know, get into, I may even have to take the cab off. I don't know to get underneath it and that. So it, it could be a big job. So I don't want to, not be able to use the truck for the whole summer. I'll just, uh, yeah. So I'm putting it back together. I'm painting the floor where all that seam sealer was. It was just bare metal. So I rubbed it down, painted it. And my next step is to get the gas tank back in the vehicle. I've got the fuel tank back in now. It took a little longer to put it back in than it did to take it out. I kind of had to line everything, get all the hoses and the electrical in position, but it's in now, bolted in. So I'm going to start it up and test it and uh, see if I notice any fuel smell. All right, here we go. Fire it up right away. Fuel gauge is working. It's almost there on the idle. Let's go back and check for fuel leaks now. So here we are. Up here, everything looks dry. That's good, that from that connection. Yeah, I think everything's okay. Okay for now anyway. I've painted all the areas where I put the putty on. You can see it in this corner maybe. There. Yeah, I, I painted the areas where the putty's on. So if it does leak fuel, it usually takes the paint off and I'll notice it. So my next job is I'm going to paint the floors in the front. So I've got to move the front seat into the back here. So I'll have to move all this stuff out and then I can uh, rub the floors down, degrease them and spray paint them red. That'll be kind of exciting. I've got the interior all cleaned out in the front and ready for painting. I rubbed it all down with the what is this stuff called? Wax and grease remover. It's hard to know when to stop. I mean, you could just, you know, keep finishing the floor for days, getting it all smooth and perfect. And But I got to remember, it's not a show truck. It's going to be more of a working truck. So I think that's going to do it. I'm going to start spraying the red color on the floor, just like I started in this one corner. So I'll do up until, you know, midway through the back floor. Getting all that bare metal painted and the black floor is all painted. And we'll come back and see what it looks like. The red paint is on the floor. Let's go in and have a look. I think it turned out pretty good. There it is. I don't know if you can see it. 
there it is it's all red <laughs> regal red yeah it, it came out quite nice um, nice smooth shiny coat on there got a good day for painting it's warm not very humid there's a nice wind blowing so should dry quite nicely so once all that dries my next step will be to put the front seat which is in the back move it forward bolt it down bolt all the seat belts down find some mats for the uh, floor it took one and three quarters cans of spray paint and it went pretty good it went uh, I put it on nice and thick I didn't get any runs or anything I may put some more coats on in the future but uh, I think this will do for now I'm sure it'll get scuffed up and then uh, you know I'll fix it up a bit more each time yeah I think that looks good I like that I think with some black floor mats in here it'll just be perfect I was trying out the uh, new sills you can see them in the corner there yeah, they look pretty fancy as the one on this side there'll be a few fitment problems um, where they repaired the door in the corner there it's kind of shifted the sill back so the screw holes don't align up so I'll have to I'll have to fix that um, but other than that it's looking pretty fancy in here can't wait to get everything back together it's the end of the evening and the paint is drying really nicely so I think I'll be able to put the seats in tomorrow and the seat belts and then I can drive it we have moved the front seat from the back here to the front and I'm just bolting it in place you can see the bolts at the back here the bolts for the seat belts and up front here I'll have to slide the seat back to get at the bolts that are under there but uh, yeah the, seat, the front seat slides back and forth I was uh, fitting these rails up these are side sills uh, they're a little bit different than the factory ones there seems to be a little extra length on this front piece now some of that I can maybe adjust with a bit of bending but uh, I'll have to see how it fits if worst if you know the worst case scenario is I may have to cut it here cut it across here and have two separate pieces I don't want to do that but uh, I don't want to drill new holes in the floor I want them to line up with the old ones so I'll get it figured out one way or another so that's I've put some black mats in the front here they're a little small I've got some bigger ones these are probably meant for the back seat but I was just trying it out to see how it looks I kind of like it I've got the truck all back together looking really good it went together really easily I've just got those temporary carpets in the front the seats in seat belts are in back seat I've got a toolbox <laughs> it's an old toolbox of my dad's back when we used to live in Rothsay long ago yeah so that's my toolbox for the back here um, until I get the back seat in of course but uh, we are off my wife and I are off to get a load of wood chips there's some free wood chips from my sister's house so we got a bunch of plastic pails and bags and we'll load those up and yeah get the truck back to work I'm going to fill it up with uh, gas too test and see if I've got a gasoline smell from the fuel tank hopefully I won't hopefully everything's okay it smells fine inside right now it smells a little like paint if anything so yeah so I'm really happy it, it's looking good in here I like all the metal and the red yeah it's a, a no-nonsense truck that's for sure the test drive went really well I put uh, $25 worth of gas in it no gas smells at all it's just smells like paint in there now so that's good got a load of wood chips 
there we are. Not a real heavy load, but enough to keep us busy for a while. We paused for lunch and a rainstorm and then headed off and got load number two, full of compost and wood chips. Really good stuff. My next job on the truck is an exciting one, at least visually anyway. I am sanding the wheels and wet sanding them, getting the silver paint smoothed out with the black paint that's underneath, and then I'll be painting them a gloss black. I think that'll look really good. It looked good in the render anyway, so I think it'll look okay in real life too. So that's what I'm working on. Kind of just a fun project to finish off the day. I've got the first wheel rubbed down. And I've kind of got a mask here that I can spray paint and it'll kind of mask off the tire. So hopefully everything will work. It was hard getting into all these spaces around the bolts, but I went in there with the degreaser. There was a lot of grease and grime in there. Got it all cleaned out. I sanded down the lips best I could and then degreased them all. And so, I'm going to spray it now and we'll have a black wheel. All right, here's the reveal. The rear tire is painted black and there it is. Turned out pretty good. It's hard to get a good view of the truck with the black wheel on, but uh, you can kind of see it there. Yeah, looks pretty good, I think. Front wheel silver. The only thing, I, I like the silver, but the only thing I don't like is that the center hub and the wheel nuts are kind of black and rusty. So I think the black wheel is the more logical choice. And it, it makes the truck look a little more um, uh, like a work truck rather than a you know fancy show truck. Yeah, so that's the first wheel painted black. I think it's gonna look pretty good when it's all blacked out. Wheel number two is sanded down, degreased, and ready for paint. So I'm painting both wheels on this side, and then I'll get out and we'll have a look, compare the two, and see which I like better. Hopefully it's the black one. <laughs> I've got the front wheel painted now. Looks pretty good, I like it. I like the hub being black, shiny black like that. It looks more finished than having like the rusty, greasy hub sticking out. Yeah, so the next step is I'll let them dry. Not fully, but uh, till they're kind of uh, almost dry. And then I'll drive it out of here into a parking lot or something and then we'll have a look at both sides and see which looks better, black or silver. There's some good storm clouds up there. I think it's going to rain again, but I am in sunshine. Looks just like in the picture, except the wheels are a little shinier. Well, I, I like that. I think it looks good. Yeah, good looking truck, I think. I'm just having a good look with the black wheels. It's quite different. Let's go around to the back view. I'm thinking I might paint the bumpers black too. Just to kind of match the wheels. Let's go around to the silver side now. I may have to pull the truck back the other direction, but hey, you can see the silver side. The silver side before the storm. Kind of 
kind of a nice shot there. I should take a photograph, I will. So there's the silver side. Yeah, it's quite a different look. Sorry about the wind, it's really, really windy here. Quite a different look with the silver wheels. Which do I like better? I think the black looks more aggressive. Looks meaner with the black wheels, I think. Yeah, I like them. Alright, it is time to go home, put the seat belt on, the lap belt, there we go, time to go home, here we go. Okay, here we go. Good, this thing. Nice downshift there. Oh yeah, love it. This truck is really fun to drive. I don't know if I've already said that, but uh, yeah, I really like driving this thing. It's so raw, it's just like a metal box around you. It's from a simpler time, that's for sure. There's no airbags in here. Fuel tanks behind me, just a lap belt. You can get shoulder belts for this truck and it's, it's already drilled for them. So I might buy some and put them in just for safety. Okay, let's get a downshift here. There we go, second gear. Nice. Okay, let's give some thunder here. Ready? Nice. there. Stop sign. And we're almost home. Whoa. It's been a hot day today. It doesn't help hauling wood chips either. kind of squeaks a bit when I put it in. I'll have to uh, have to look at that. All right, that was a good trip. Good trip. Uh, took lots of photos of the truck and I'll look at them and I'm pretty sure I like the black wheels better. So I don't know. We'll see. Engine off. I've got wheel number three sanded down, degreased, 
And this time, instead of spraying overspray on the wheels, because that cardboard cutout didn't work very well, I've masked it off a bit and that should, that should keep the paint off the tire. All right, let's see how this wheel goes. Wheel number three is now painted. Looking nice and glossy. Yeah, that worked well, the masking tape. It was uh, a little easier to spray. Yeah, got a good coat on there. It's gonna look good. I've got the masking tape off the front wheel and I was able to reuse it. So I've got it stuck on the back wheel and the back wheel is all ready for painting. So, last wheel, let's get it done. I've got the last wheel painted now. I do have a spare tire for this truck and the wheel is black for the spare, so it'll match these ones. Yeah, so when that dries a bit, I'll take the tape off and that'll be it for the wheels. It's looking pretty good. I like the uh, tires and the black wheels. Yeah, it's kind of cool. The truck is all back together. Kind of nice to see. I've got the back loaded with uh, garbage pails or yeah, cut, plastic pails, cut. Try that again. I've got the front tire painted now, cut. Not the tire, 